This was the first maze generator I uploaded to YouTube. And this is my latest design. My smallest and fastest design yet. So how did we go from this to this? I present to you Redstone Maze Generator version 3. Hi everyone, today I will be going over my latest redstone maze generator. This contraption will generate a perfect maze, meaning the maze will always have a possible solution, and it will contain no loops or isolated areas. I built three different versions of this design. The main version consists of rooms and iron doors. This is the version I would recommend for building in survival. In this version, each cell takes up just a 4x4x4 area, which makes this the smallest redstone maze generator ever built as of the time of upload. For comparison, my previous design was 6x6x12 per cell, making this version almost 7 times smaller than my previous design. I also made a display version, and a version with fully retractable walls. This is also the fastest maze generator that I have personally made. While my previous designs generated fully new mazes in a matter of minutes, this one will generate a maze in mere seconds. So how is all of this possible? Well, it is all thanks to a recent breakthrough in the maze generation community. A few months ago, the Minecraft YouTuber DQWERTYC invented a brand new maze generating algorithm. He calls it Hilbert Lookahead. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that this algorithm completely revolutionizes maze generation in Minecraft. So what is Hilbert Lookahead? It works by utilizing what's known as a Hilbert curve, a space-filling curve that visits every cell in a grid and can be created using a recursive pattern. Here's the algorithm. For each cell in the grid, we choose a random neighboring cell that is further along in the Hilbert curve and connect them. Take this cell, for example. It has four neighboring cells. This cell is further behind in the Hilbert curve, so we exclude it from our options. The three remaining cells are further ahead in the curve, so we choose a random one to connect to. This simply means that the player can travel between these cells. We can also visualize the direction of this connection by representing it as an arrow. We repeat this for every cell in the grid, and the result will always be a perfect maze. And that's it. So why does this work? Well, remember that the defining characteristic of a perfect maze is that it contains no loops and no isolated areas. With this algorithm, since each cell in the grid connects to a cell that is further along in the Hilbert curve, it is impossible for cells to point to each other in a loop, since that would require a cell to point to a cell that is further behind in the curve. But what about isolated areas? For that, let's take a look at a random cell. By the rules of the algorithm, this cell will point to a cell that's further along the Hilbert curve. And that cell will point to a cell that's even further along the curve, and so on and so on. Eventually, this path will reach the cell at the very end of the curve. Since this is true for every single cell, it's impossible for any cell to be separated from the rest of the tree, since every path will eventually converge and reach the cell at the end of the Hilbert curve. And that's why Hilbert Lookahead will always result in a perfect maze. It's a truly remarkable algorithm. If any of that sounded interesting to you, I recommend checking out DQWERTYC's video on the algorithm for more information. The link will be in the description. But before you go and use this algorithm yourself, I recommend placing the exit where the Hilbert curve starts and the entrance at the opposite corner. And of course, you can rotate the whole curve so that the exit is in whichever corner you'd like. This way, the player has to work against the flow of the cells, which actually makes for a slightly more difficult solve. So how did I go about translating this algorithm into redstone? Well, before getting into the circuitry, I first need to admit that I'm actually cheating a bit. My generator doesn't have the full capacities of Hilbert Lookahead. To explain why, let's label the directions that each cell has the possibility of connecting to. Notice that some cells only have one neighboring cell that is further along the curve, so we don't actually need to implement any logic for these cells, and we can rule them out. Out of the remaining cells, we see that most of them have to choose between two neighboring cells. But notice that some of these cells have three neighbors which are further along the curve, which would require a three-way randomizer. 
three-way randomizers in Minecraft can get kinda big, and I was aiming to make this design as small as possible. So for my design, I decided to rule out a single direction for these cells, making each cell a two-way choice. This slightly limits the number of possible mazes the generator can create, but it was worth the sacrifice in my opinion since it allowed me to make the redstone a lot smaller. With that out of the way, here is the redstone for a single cell of the maze. We have a dropper containing a stackable item and a non-stackable item. When activated, it will dispense one of its items into this hopper. Normally, a stackable item will output a signal strength of 1, while a non-stackable item will output a signal strength of 3. However, for this design, I set this comparator to subtract mode, and I'm sending a signal strength of 1 to the side by using this barrel with a single stackable item. This will essentially just subtract 1 from the output of this comparator. So now, the comparator will output nothing if the stackable item is dispensed, since 1 minus 1 is 0, but it will give an output if the non-stackable item is dispensed. I placed a copper bulb in front of this comparator, so whenever the dropper is activated, there will be a 50% chance that the copper bulb will toggle. Next, we're taking an output from the copper bulb and activating two doors. But wait, this will make it so that both doors will either be open or both will be shut, and we want it so that only one of these doors is open at a time. Well, here we can utilize a little trick. By placing one of these doors at an angle, the door is still technically open, but it appears to be shut. Now, when the dispenser is activated, the doors will have a 50% chance of flipping. All we have to do now is find a way of activating every cell in the maze, so I added an observer line to the bottom of the cell. This will activate the dropper, and the signal will carry on to the next cell. But this doesn't quite work. Right now, we can only toggle the left and upmost doors of a cell. But remember, we're using the Hilbert curve to determine which doors each cell can open, and this could be in any of four directions. Because of this, I actually made four separate cells. Each one is just a rotated version of the first, but if I come down to the bottom of these cells, the observer chains all point in the same direction. This way, once we've finished laying out the maze, the observer lines will all line up. There's also a cell with just the observer chain for the cells that always point in one direction. All that was left to do was to paste in each cell to their correct spots on the grid. And after that, the generator was complete. Once I finished the base design, I made some modifications to create the display version and the retractable walls version. And that's it! The design is fairly simple, and it's all thanks to the Hilbert Look Ahead algorithm. I'm really happy with how this build turned out, and I had a lot of fun working on it. If you would like to try it out, the world download link is down below. Before I go, I'd like to thank DQWERTYC for his amazing algorithm, and Rapscallion1138 for sparking my passion for maze generation in the first place. This video wouldn't be possible without them, so please go check them out if you have the time. I'll link both their channels in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the like button as it would really help this video out, and subscribe so you can see more content like this. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!